I don't know if you've ever been lost before. Uh, it's kind of like a scary thing. I remember I got lost uh, as like an eight-year-old at the state fair. We had gone off a ride. My family kind of got separate. I'm pretty sure I got distracted by like a deep-fried Twinkie or something, which sounds kind of great right now. But when you get lost, they're like, it's kind of scary because you don't really know what to do. You kind of start freaking out. I started bawling. I think I just sat down on the ground, and, and one of the workers came up and said, excuse me, little boy, do you need to help find your parents? I'm like, yeah. I don't know where to go, what to do. I think they left me. I don't really know. But you know what's really sweet after being lost? It's that being reunited and being found. It's kind of like the same thing, like when you go through a tough season of life and you finally make it to the other side, or you've been working through that trial and somehow you grit it out, or, well, nothing really seems to pan out. Your plans failed, that business didn't quite pan out the way, the year that you wanted it to, and yet everything still seemed to work out. Now, I don't know about you, but in some ways, I think that's kind of what 2021 was for a lot of us is, man, we didn't really know what to do. We felt lost. We felt kind of cornered, hopeless. We weren't really sure what to make or do with all of this. And yet here we are. We're still standing. We still have a roof over our heads. We still have so many things to be grateful and to sing praises about. And there's a psalm that I've been drawn to very often throughout this past year that I want to read for us all. It's a Psalm 126. So if you have your Bible, you can turn there with me. And this is a psalm that brought me immense comfort when I didn't feel comfortable. It brought me really good senses of hope when I felt kind of lost, when the future seemed foggy. And I hope and pray that it does that for you as well this morning. Psalm 126, follow along with me. It says this. It says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying to sow, seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. I kind of see two big things here in this psalm. And the first thing is this, is that we go to God when life gets hard. When the fortunes, so to speak, have gotten lost on us, when our dreams have kind of crumbled, when life just seems a little bit too difficult, when we're not really sure if we can make it another day, take another step, when the way forward just seems kind of foggy, as believers, as disciples, we ought to turn and go and run into the arms of the Father. Now, if you're like me, you probably don't do that really super well. You might try to distract yourself with something over there. You might maybe find that new show and kind of binge it to distract your mind or what's really going on. Or maybe you might kind of do what I have a tendency to do. is just like, Eric, you need to buck up. You should be a little bit stronger. All of this, well, you can fix it. You're strong. You're big. You're mighty. You're powerful. You can really get through another day. Just try a little bit harder, work a little bit harder, be a little bit smarter. It all rests on you. And finally, at some point, you just get to this moment where you're like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't have any answers. I feel lost. I've I've tried everything. I'm just kind of, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. I'm just, everything just seems like it's in vain. And I think it's at that moment when God says, ah, you get it now. Because in your weakness, my strength shines through. You don't have to be righteous because my son is righteous for you. You don't have to have all of the answers because I have given you my spirit to lead you forward. That's why the psalmist says here, it is the Lord who restores the fortune. It is the Lord who has done great things. It is he who does the work, not us. And kind of that first step is we go to God when life gets hard because we know we can't. But the second thing is we go to God when life gets hard so that we can praise him when he moves. I'm convinced that one of the best ways for us to see and to experience the power of God in our lives is to run to him when things just kind of seem a little messy, a little broken, a little confused. Because when it all pans out, when we get to the other side, when we feel lost and we're found, when we kind of grit it out and Jesus is waiting for us with open arms, we realize it's been him all along. He's the one who's been doing the work in us and through us. You see, in 126, I kind of like to think about these Israelite people. They're kind of a little downtrodden. They're a little bit broken. Maybe they're a little tired and wore out. 
Maybe the kids aren't really behaving at home. Maybe, you know, the camel sales didn't go quite as good as they should have this year because of some things going on in the world. And yet, what do they say? God has done great things. He turns our sorrow into joy. We will shout praises to his name. He has restored our fortune. The Lord has done great things. And that's what I want to do in these last couple of minutes for us as a church body is just to celebrate, seeing out praises and joy of the great things that God has done in our church this year. We've seen almost 1,000 next steps of faith in the year 2021 alone. Let me just say that again. 1,000 next steps of faith in the year 2021 alone. And you know what happened in 2021. It was kind of a crazy and chaotic year, yet there were still 1,000 next steps of faith to be celebrated. That's incredible. That well over $150,000, could be way more by that, by now has been given to mission partners, both locally and abroad to help further the gospel and the kingdom of God. I believe that prayer has become even more central in the life of our church. Our elders are leading this charge to really say, man, God does nothing unless we begin to pray and start there. We're hearing stories of people finding community and faith for the first time, unsolicited stories of people coming up to myself or our staff saying, I don't know what's going on at this church. I've been here a few years, a few months, I'm new, but I definitely know that I can feel the spirit is doing something incredible. I can't wait to see what happens next. First, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your worship. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your discipleship. Thank you for your heart for Jesus. Thank you for everything that you continue to do in order to help each other follow Jesus. So let me close with this word of encouragement for us all here this morning and in the year 2021. It's this, it's that God has done and will do even greater things through us. But remember, it's his doing. It's what he does through us. He is the one who makes our fortunes come to the surface. He is the one who has done great things. And if we remain faithful, if we remain obedient, if we remain led by his spirit, centered on prayer and in his word, even greater things wait in store for us. We love you guys. We're thankful for you guys. We can't wait to be the church with you where we live, work, and play. And we'll see you next year. Thanks for joining us.